Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. In today's video, we're learning some of the basics of PowerShell, specifically on how to install or execute application installation. So what, we'll, uh, what I will teach you here is how to use some basic commands that would lead you towards creating your own scripts that would allow you to install software through the PowerShell. So basically, once you go to the internet and you download something, it's going to be inside of downloads folder and Whatever you decide to install, let's, for example, take this example here, Media Creation Tool 1809. You would simply double click it, then you get the prompt and you go through the prompts and then you install everything like that. Well, you can also execute this through the PowerShell. So there are a couple of ways of doing this, which will help you get to the point where you create your own script to run PowerShell remote installs or even local installs, if you will. And that is to get to the same directory. So if we type in CD downloads it's going to take us to that directory the reason they got this to the directory is because we we're already partially there but if we really wanted to navigate to this it would be simple as this we're going to type in users name of the local profile that i'm using which is yt login and then i'm going to type in downloads it's going to get us to the same place so if we type in dir we can see that that media creation tool is indeed there as well so this is one of those things you might want to double check every time you create or before you start to create your scripts <clears throat> by the way this is going to be a little bit more advanced so it's a little bit more advanced for uh, you know people who are more familiar with computer software but if you're new to computers i will try to go as slow as possible comparatively speaking here's the same directory in a gui form so this is inside of our windows and we can see that it's exact same stuff that we see in here so let's go ahead and execute it from the powershell and the way to do that is to type in start process and then type in media creation tool dot exe See, now we get the same prompt to uh, go through our uh, prompts to, you know, basically install our software. However, if you want to make this to be a silent operation, you would do the same thing and then just do a switch or a command, which is forward slash S. This would execute it silently if it is an MSI package, typically. It won't work here because this is executable. It's designed to literally go through the prompts like that. But if you do have MSI package, it will allow you to do so like so. And for example of an MSI package, in case you don't know, is for example, this one. This is an MSI installer for that, and that is that MSI. Now here's another example of how to do it on from a remote uh, remote location in our case we might have something on a network level which is for me located here i went ahead and created a folder for this example on forward uh, backslash backslash kobuman one and that is the pc name or the server name that you might be using and then i'm going to type in folder name repo one so if we look inside of this one the ir we can see that we still have that media creation tool inside of that so the same way we can execute it from here as well so we can start type in the same way start process media creation tool 1809.exe since we're in the disk directory already i can just hit enter and we're going to get that pop up again and it's installing so i went ahead and cancel that this is where you're getting all these errors now we can the same way we can start our script by typing in let's see here start dash process and then we're simply going to navigate to the network location let's see here and then it's going to be cobbleman one for uh, folder name repo one and then we're going to do a backslash and then we're going to type in media creation tool 1809.exe. Then we're going to hit enter. And now we have that pop up again. And again, if you want to make this silent, you're going to have to create your own MSI package or something like that and basically design it so it is silent. So meaning that nothing happens that you see visually, it just kind of installs it. So that's how you would do it. Uh, that's how you would start to create your script for a remote location using PowerShell. 
Now, you can also use a package manager to download different applications or access different applications and execute them like so, but you would have to have some kind of a uh, package manager that would allow you to do so. So let's look at a repository that's online available right now that you can kind of look at as an example of that. So there's one that was set up for testing by Microsoft, which we will navigate here in a moment. Let me just do a, a quick clear here so that we don't have any uh, confusion here. And in order to find these packages, we can type in find dash package and then we need to specify a provider which that means is you know dash provider this is basically indicates that we're going to now type in the provider name in our case the provider or our server name if you will is chocolatey i think that's how it's pronounced so we're going to hit enter here and see what happens so Here's just the run of all the things that are available as in packages on this repository or uh, server, if you will. So how do we get any of these packages downloaded to our computer? We just kind of have to know which one we want, but we can also kind of, if we specifically want to look for some specific, let's say, I don't know, uh, let's say Notepad. So we can stop it from kind of going through all the things and see if there's anything available for Notepad. Because you can see there are so many different things here. And if there's something specific that you can there you're looking for, you're gonna have to, you know, kind of remember that or specifically search for. So let's stop this process here. And I'm gonna leave it up just for the sake of reference. I'm gonna open up a new PowerShell and we're going to access the same repository, but I'm going to tell it to look for a specific name. And in our case we're going to use an example of namepad so we're going to type in again find dash package and then we're going to type in provider and then server chocolatey and i'm going to specify a command which is name that tells it i'm okay i want you to look for this specifically or anything or any derivative of that or anything like that i'm going to type in notepad and i'm going to use asterisk so i'm going to type in and everything that's uh, that has a notepad there's in, inside of this uh, repository it's going to show up as so so now we can see all the things that are available as a package um, inside of this repository so yes we can now download these packages and uh, we're going we can use them in our package manager to push this type of different software so what can we do with this point well we can install one of these packages so let's go ahead and pick a, a random one let's Let's pick this one, Notepad++. We're going to do Control C on this, so we have it saved. And then again, we're going to uh, we use some commands. And this is this case, instead of typing in Find Package, we're going to type in Install Package. Install Package. We're going to uh, type in Provider once more, and then we're going to type in Chocolaty. And then we're going to specify name and then we're going to say notepad plus plus so let's see what happens when we execute that and now it's asking us whether we trust this source which is for the right reasons if you're going to look at this repository make sure that you feel comfortable with installing this on your computer and here it asks you are you sure you want to install software from chocolatey and i can say yes yes to all no or no to all suspend or or if you're unsure, you can type in help. So in my case, I'm just gonna type in Y for yes, and I'm gonna hit enter. And now it's installing this package. So let's see what happened. Did this actually install it? This is actually what happened. When we did that, it actually just downloaded that repository into our folder that is created on the root of C, and it's going to be in our libraries. And here is our chocolatey, uh, well, there's a core extension, there it is, notepad++ is what we just got here and there are a couple of different packages here that are installed ah this one actually came with the installer so that's cool now we can actually execute this installer if we really wanted to and all right i found that some of these uh packages are not com incomplete that i've downloaded for example visual studio here this one doesn't seem to have the actual 
the actual uh, executable in there. But this one actually installed. What is this one? This is part of the same one. Okay, well, we can execute this now. And all we got to do is just copy this path here. And then we can type in again, start process. And then we can specify that. And then we, we need to get the name of that installation. Let's do the uh, x64, the 64-bit version of that. And I'm going to paste that in there. And I'm going to hit enter. And here it is. Now, let's see if it works silently. It errored out because I clicked no, as you saw. I'm going to use the S switch. Let's see if this... Nope. So yeah, it has to be an MSI package for it to install silently. And this one is just a simple executable. Anyways, guys, I hope you find this kind of interesting because it really is. You can um, do, we can set up scripts that will allow you to install remote uh, software packages into multiple computers, this and that. There are many, many ways of going about it. This is kind of just an introduction to PowerShell. And uh, there are many, many different tools that you can look at. And, uh, and not only can you install, you can also uninstall. And again, there are different ways of doing this. You can use the invoke command or you can just use install package command. You can use the start process command, many, many different ways. And this is the great thing about PowerShell. You can customize this to your needs or to your business needs of just the way, you've, the way it feels the best for your type of business that you'll work at. And, you know, I'm not an expert on this. Uh, I know some of the basic stuffs, and I really believe that everybody should know and familiarize themselves with some of the basic stuff, just as much as you would familiarize yourself with just using command prompt and creating basic scripts. So that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Please share it with your friends. If you have any questions, please let me know, and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.